Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. We are on episode number five of our journey from going from a noob to an ASM coder. Alright, and today's episode is, is the final thread of the tier uh, for noob level threads. Noob level threads, excuse me. This is going to be for porting codes. And what do I mean by porting codes? Well, if you have a code for one region, but you don't have it for another region at MKWE, I will teach you how to what steps you need to do to make that to port that code so you can make it work. For example, you have a code for NTSCU, but you don't have the PAL version. This tutorial will teach you how to change that code to the PAL version, uh, and all you really need is a hex editor, and that's really about it. So let's begin. Now, I know this is I know a lot of you guys have been viewing this series just like waiting in anticipation for the ASM stuff but it's really crucial to go all to go over all of these noob level threads you know you gotta learn how to crawl before you can walk you gotta learn the most basic stuff and learn it the right way or else this you know complex stuff in the future you're never gonna learn it all so it's just really crucial I know some of you guys might want to rush some of these noob level threads but don't as mentioned before in episode one uh, read all the threads out a hundred percent follow whatever videos you're following in the series a hundred percent don't proceed till you are a hundred percent confident that you can go to the next episode or next step alright back on the subject how to port codes to other regions what you'll need hex editor we talked about that in episode four so you should already have a hex editor by now if you don't chances are you're a windows person just get what is called HXD. It is free to download. It can install on a wide variety of Windows operating systems, even as far back as like Windows XP, maybe even further back. Uh, RAM dumps. Uh, this was also mentioned about in episode four. Uh, if you don't have RAM dumps, um, you'll need them. Now, it's, this is a little different. So in episode four, you just need the RAM dump for whatever game that you played on. Obviously, if we're porting a code from one region slash version of MKWE to another, we need two RAM dumps. We need one where you're starting out where the code starts off as, and the, the for two, the RAM dump for the version for the version you want to port to. Okay, so for, for this example, we're going to take a code that's not super easy to port, but not insanely difficult to port at the same time. Just to give you an example what to do if you run into a little bit of an issue. Because sometimes ports can take literally five seconds, other times they can take like 15 minutes to figure out. It just all depends. So we're going to be working with the NTSCU show item early code. And if I recall correctly, Bully was the creator of this code. Let me get a sip of water. Okay, so this is for NTSCU. Just to make sure you know that, we'll just put this at the top. Okay. As mentioned in episode 2, I tell you how to decipher the static memory address from an ASM code. So we know this is the ASM code because it's C2. So we just take this value, you just take the C2, change it to 80, boom, plug that in. That's the memory address that we need to worry about. Okay, so in episode um, 4, remember I talked about. Um, a code's default instruction at its memory address. All right, so that's what we need to do first. So we need to navigate on a hex editor to this address, okay? And we will obviously see the default instruction at this memory address. So if your hex editor is not open, open it. We're gonna go ahead and open the RAM dumps that you need. So for this tutorial, we'll need to open up the NTSCU RAM dump and the PAL RAM dump, okay? because we're porting this code from NTSCU, the show item early code, and we're going to port it to PAL. So we're going to open both. They both open instantly, or you can open one at a time. It doesn't matter. So in episode four, I also talked about <clears throat> how to navigate to a memory address and a hex editor RAM dump. So for HXD, do control G, and all you need is the memory address value, but you don't need the 8-0. You just need the 7AB9D4 part. All right, go here, and this right here, this 907F001C, this is the default compiled instruction at that memory address. 
So let's go ahead and try to port it. So f whenever you port, what you want to do is you want to take the default instruction value, the word, and you want to copy it. Okay? And now we do control F. This will give us like a search to run. Do control V if you copied it from earlier or just right click and put it in. And we're going to change the data type from text to hex values because as described in episode 2, all compiled values that you see in memory, they're all in hexadecimal. Okay. And we'll just leave the search direction on forward. Click OK. Now, this is a problem. Why is this a problem? Okay, so when you port codes, all right, their ad the code's addresses um, are going to differ a little bit. Because remember I talked about before in episode 2, uh, regions MKW will have their default memory values, or at least memory values at memory addresses will all differ slightly per region. So if we look at this offset, we can remember how we t I told you how to take a memory address value, take the 80 for the offset to put in a hexadecimal. Well, let's reverse that um, process. Let's take this offset and put it to a memory address. So this would be 800F4410. Now, what do you, what's the problem here? The problem is, look how big of a difference this is. We're at 7AB94 is our starting point. How do we drop all the way to 0F4410? So when you have this drastic of a change in porting, it's a 99% chance your port's just wrong. Now, what can we do? Well, we use the word value as the default string, per se, for our string search for the PAL RAM dump going from NTSCU to PAL. So what you need to do is, and this is all kind of guesswork because it all depends on the code. If you do a word value for a string search and it doesn't work, make it two words, double word. If it doesn't work, extend it longer. Hell, you might have to even highlight like a whole gigantic portion of RAM to find it. Because if there's repeating results, then it makes it that much harder. What you want to do is have the shortest string search possible that still produces only one result for the region that you want to port to. That's the goal here. So for this, where were we at? Let's go here. Uh, we should, uh, this might differ from what I used in the tutorial. It might be the same, but let's go ahead and select this amount. I think in the tutorial I did the four words instead of five. But let's do this. Let's copy these five words starting at the memory address. And let's use that instead. And another thing, a little tip you want to do is do the all search direction, all right, instead of forward. The reason why is we're not at the very beginning of memory when we first opened up this RAM dump file. That's why I left the search direction on forward. But now we're a little forward in memory because we already searched once before. So we want to put the search direction to all so it searches both ahead of this memory address or offset, if you will, in the text editor, and behind it. All right, so we got our value plugged in, paste that in, leave data type to hex values, search direction to all, OK. And boom, right off the bat, I can tell you this is correct, but let's just go over it. OK, we found the string. We see we, uh, we have 7BA434. 7BA434. And as you can see, it's different than the NTSCU value, but pretty close, right? Okay, so what you want to do is after you search, when you find whatever string you want, do a find again. So we'll go over that one more time. Click search at the top, find again, or you can just press the F3 hotkey, whatever works for you. Uh, if you're using a different hex editor, the shortcut values might be different, just FYI. And you can see it says can't find the string again. So now, we do that one more time. We go to, uh, back up to top search, but we go find again, parentheses, reverse, or shift F3, and it can't find it. So we know for 100% this string in the PAL dump, in PAL memory, it only occurs at this spot. So it's like a 99.9999999% chance this is the right port, but 100% chance because this code has already been ported and all the regions for this code has already been tested because this is a really old code. So now that we got our PAL memory value, we'll just delete that. And I'm going to make sure it's the right value, make sure I didn't F up anything. 7BA434. As usual, when you're porting, take your time, don't rush. 
Okay, so now, remember how I told you how to take the memory address from a C2 code, you know, taking off the C2 byte, converting it, changing that to 80, but keeping the rest of the values? Do the reverse. Take this 80, C2, and now you can just plug in the rest of the ASM code. Copy, paste. And there you go. Pal, show, item, early. And that's that. Some notes here to consider. Complex ASM codes might have instructions within the ASM code itself that will vary per region. So this type of standard porting or beginner type porting, if you will, would not work. You can't just port the memory address. You, some compiled instructions will have to be changed. All right, Just an FYI. If you run into that case and you're a beginner and you haven't learned actual ASM yet, you're early in the journey, you're just here at episode 5, you might want to contact someone who's an actual code creator to port those type of complex ASM codes for you. But if you're working with a simple ASM code like this, easy to do. So a little recap is um, you want to find the search string, keep it as short as possible, but make sure it only appears once in your search results when you're searching using the search find again and find again reverse. And that is it. Um, obviously, with porting, test your codes uh, or test whatever whoever's code you're porting, test them thoroughly, and that's it. And that is it, guys. That is done for the noob level threads. It wasn't too much. The only real long one was episode two which I apologize for not doing my best narrating that could have done a little better but oh well um, anyway so that's it so we covered we did an intro we covered the glossary covered the simplified cheat code intro slash tutorial filling in XYZ values activators and deactivators and finally porting codes so in the next episode episode 6 it will be the thread how to make your own cheat codes where we really get into the nitty and gritty, if you will, of all this ASM coding. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.